Hello, this is a non-statistical movie about the Ottawa multi-unit investment market and what went on from my perspective in 2021. Now, just before I get into that, for you investors out there, uh, 2022 is seeing a provincially regulated rental increase of 1.2%. And in 2020, it, sorry, in 2021, it was zero. So inflation is running about 5%. Where's the fairness in that? Where's the profit opportunity for an investor, for a landlord? So I just want to throw that out there. Now, in 2021, as usual, I represented both investors who are selling their buildings and in purchasing uh, properties. And we submitted, I submitted many, many more offers than were actually successful. I had a lot of failures. So why the heck is this guy sitting here telling you about his failures? Who the hell want to do business with him, right? But this is just an indication of the overall market and some of the things that went on. So in one property that I had a client actually conditionally purchase, it was a nine unit building. Like I said, it was conditionally sold and in that process, we kept having missed time frames by the seller. And when we would send the original offer in and give them an irrevocable of, let's say, tomorrow at six, the seller would get back to us two or three days later, and it just took forever, and that was a harbinger of things to come. So when my client actually was able to successfully conditionally purchase it, all of the documents that we requested in our offer, they were supposed to be delivered by a certain date. So we never did get the leases. We were late getting the uh, expenses. And then that date would want to be extended and extended. And at one point, my buyer said, forget it. If this guy is so disorganized and unmotivated, I'm not interested. I want to move on to an opportunity. So we, we terminated that. So if you're a seller, get your documentation together before you put the property on the market, uh, or it may not turn out well for you. Uh, in another property, it was a four unit building that my client conditionally purchased. And during the building inspection, it was discovered that there was an underground oil tank there, buried oil tank. And my client actually wanted to move ahead with the purchase, but the seller would not allow us to investigate the oil tank. Basically, my, my client wanted to know if it was leaking or not because there was a strong odor of oil. So was there still oil in the tank? The seller would not let us do that because they were afraid that if we did find out that it was leaking, they would have to disclose that and have a very big bill on their hands, right? So again, that's another failed opportunity. And my client backed out of the uh, out of the deal. There was another property where we submitted an offer and then we withdrew it because one of the units was completely illegal and it was not fire retrofit. It was not as advertised. So my client said, I, I just don't want to be part of this. And, and we moved on to something else. Now, there was another property. This was a three unit building. My client conditionally purchased it. We went through the building inspection phase and we found that there was mold just all over the attic. In fact, it was so bad that the plywood had to be removed, you know, take off the shingles and the, the entire roof and re-roof it. There was mold on all four walls in the basement that we couldn't see, you know, on our walkthrough of the property. Uh, the found, entire foundation needed to be wrapped at a cost of ballpark fifty fifty five thousand dollars $55,000. So my client terminated that deal and we, we ran away. There was another property there was a five unit building my client conditionally purchased. During the inspection of the property, uh, we learned that it was infested uh, with mice and other rodents. And there was mold in the attic and quite probably in the walls. And we found that um, it was a really weird property. Although it was legal to have that property as a five unit, if anything happened to it, for example, it burnt down, it could not be replaced the five unit building. It could only be a single family home and at best you could put a secondary dwelling unit in it. So my client thought, huh, I could pay X amount of dollars for this property, it burns down, and then I can't even rebuild the bloody thing. So we backed out of that deal. Um, there were three other buildings that we submitted offers on, but the buyers couldn't 
complete it because we couldn't get appraisals done in the amount of time required. And appraisals were taking forever. This is earlier on in the year. And at first appraisals could happen you know, relatively quickly, but then they got stretched out to two, three, four weeks in some cases. And the sellers weren't waiting uh, in order for a buyer to take that long to get an appraisal. So the, the deals were terminated. And I was talking to one appraiser who said that he turned down 10 to 12 appraisals per day. Per day. Can you imagine? That's how busy these guys are. Um, there was a property that I sold that was not a legal triplex. It was a legal duplex, but it was being used as a triplex. And it was not fire retrofit. But we sold it. And it's okay to do that. It's not an issue as long as the buyer and the seller are aware of it and it's disclosed and they do the due diligence and the lawyers are aware of it and all that good stuff. So we successfully sold that, that property. Um, I also helped one of my buyers purchase a property that was the same. It was, it was a building that wasn't fire retrofit. It wasn't legal. And he was just so frustrated by the difficulties of the market that he, he said, screw it. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. I'll have a fire retrofit and I'll make it legal. So that's another uh, scenario that, that happened. Um, there was a property I helped a group of investors purchase. Uh, it was a very old bungalow constructed basically in the 1960s with very few updates. And uh, they're going to modernize it and put a secondary dwelling unit in the basement and create a, an income producing property. Um, now, that was a successful offer on a property with an SDU. I probably had six or eight failed offers on properties that either were in rough shape and they were going to have SDUs put in them or they already were renovated and had, you know, bungalow on the main floor and the SDU downstairs. <clears throat> That's a very, very competitive investment market in Ottawa right now. So again, I lost about six to eight of those on bidding wars where sometimes we had up to 18 or 20 offers on a property property. Um, I had a client that purchased a building that was supposed to have a certain number of units in it and it was sold firm and then when my client's lawyer ordered a compliance report it was discovered that the building didn't exist not on the city's records. So my client wouldn't be able to do the things that they wanted to do so they decided to get out of the deal and the seller wouldn't let them out of the deal. And now it's gotten, unfortunately, to the point where both parties are in litigation against each other. Um, but that's another thing that just happened this year. And um, finally, there was another property that, I guess the moral of the story here is about compliance reports. If you're not 100% sure of what it is that you're selling and you're an owner, then get a compliance report so we know how to advertise and list the property. In this case here, my information showed that it was a two unit building. Then I was provided with an impact report and it didn't show any differently, but in the impact report, I noticed it mentioned five bathrooms. So that to me indicated maybe it was a legal five unit building, but I really had no idea. So in the end, I finally convinced the sellers to order a compliance report. And although the building was a six unit and it had six apartments, it was only a legal five unit building. So that's okay. At that point, we knew what we were selling and we could disclose that to a potential buyer. So that's how things worked out for one real estate agent in the investment market. Lots of properties that didn't go through. I have to do my job, in some cases, five, six, seven times with a client before something sticks. So if you have any questions, you, you're interested in buying a property, don't hesitate to give me a call.